Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's hot and sweaty here in Florida. I was just in the garage wiping down the bike. I like to keep it clean. Here we have that salt air by the beach, so if you don't keep your bike clean, it'll start to rust. Unless you have one of those fancy uh, garages that has climate control and all that kind of shit. I want to talk a little bit about being a biker. Sometimes I talk about spitting game. Sometimes I tell stories for myself. Every once in a while, I like to promote the motorcycle industry just because I've owned a motorcycle shop for 22 years now. There's a difference between being a biker and a motorcycle enthusiast. A motorcycle enthusiast is just some dude who likes motorcycles. A biker is different. And what makes a biker? And feel free to comment below what you think the difference is between a biker and a motorcycle enthusiast. What do you think are qualities that make someone a biker? First and foremost is you gotta have a fucking bike. But a motorcycle enthusiast can have a bike. I know a motorcycle enthusiast who has over a hundred motorcycles. He's not really a biker though. I think one of the distinctions between motorcycle enthusiasts and bikers is not just the fashion. I live here in Daytona Beach, Florida and we have two large motorcycle events each year, Bike Week and Biketoberfest. We'll have hundreds hundreds of thousands of people show up to this town and they all do kind of look alike I'll admit we all kind of look alike we're all wearing black t-shirts riding Harley Davidson's wearing boots and jeans we all kind of look alike <laughs> but you could look at any culture like that there's lots of cultures where people all look alike we could start making fun of them But that's not what makes you a biker. It's not the vest or the boots. I think it's the biker's code. We have our own code. The motorcycle enthusiasts don't have a code. There's no motorcycle enthusiast code. I don't know if there's a code in car culture. I've owned a car for a long time. No one's ever told me about a car code. I've never joined a car club though. There's lots of car clubs around. Maybe there's a car club code. Gotta watch Fast and Furious again and see if I remember them talking about that. But I don't remember any kind of code. But there sure ha damn well is a biker's code. And there has been for generations, as long as there's been biker culture. There was actually a book written about the biker's code. I have it here in my hand and it's called The Biker's Code. Wisdom for the Ride. Written by Stuart Miller. It's not a very good uh, big book. It's a small one. It has a lot of cool quotes in it that different people have uh, offered up. It is good for your coffee table. It's good for your bathroom. That's where I keep it in my bathroom. So if you come over to my house in the guest bathroom the biker code is going to be in there. If you forget your cell phone, you can read this. Let's just uh, flip through it and read a couple of these and see if we get any value out of it. And maybe some of this stuff might be transferable just to life in general. So if you're not a biker, you can still stay tuned. Here's uh, Edward Delgado, and he's been riding for 20 years, and he rides a Honda 929RR. A little picture of him. That's how each one of these pages is, as a quote by a dude, a biker. And see what Edward says about the biker's code. As a chef, I'm artistic because I'm creating something. As a biker, I'm trying to find the peace of mind to create. So there really is this kind of Zen state of mind that we get from motorcycles. And I assume that your average motorcycle enthusiast might get that as well, but bikers for the longest time have been associated with the working class. 
people who work hard and work long hours, at whatever industry. You don't typically associate bikers with millionaires or the sons of millionaires or, or frat boys. So when you work long hours, when your life it consists of that kind of daily suffering, having the escape to really get lost in your mind before you have to take care of your family and you know I mean you just taxed to fucking death this is the, the the burden of man of being a man you're beat to death and then you die and that's it I mean you know, when do you get a time to just be in your own head and to be able to have time for yourself on your fucking motorcycle is when so let's go on to another one and just see if we get anything out of it. Let's buy a woman. Let's read something by a woman. This is Grace. Her nickname is Amazing Grace. That's something that's weird. All bikers have a nickname. I've never had a nickname because my name is Sky. That's my real motherfucking name. It's on my birth certificate. When you have a weird name like that, you don't get a nickname. <laughs> my name already sounds like a nickname. If I had a nickname, it would probably be something normal like Bob or Steve. <laughs> this is Grace, Amazing Grace is her nickname. She's a technical designer. She's been riding for 10 years. She has a Harley Davidson soft tail. So let's see what she says. Oh, here's a picture of her. Kind of cute. For some, there's therapy. For the rest of us, there's motorcycles. Years ago, I found myself dangerously close to depression. I had two options. Spend the next five years and thousands of dollars in therapy or take a non-conventional approach. I bought an 87 1100 Sportster, best therapist ever. You know, and that's true, I mean, you don't see motorcycles out in front of therapists' office. Not typically, sometimes you do, but not typically. Because kind of like that last one, where you get into a kind of a motorcycle zen kind of state of mind when you're riding, it's just a good way to flush the toilet. That's what I talk about when I'm going to ride. I'm going to flush the toilet. It, it, you got like a stew of shit that just swirls around in your fucking head all day. Of all the psycho shit you think. At least this uh, for me. And there's got to be a way to get rid of it all. You can try meditation and working out and all kinds of things. Even doing drugs. None of it worked for me. What works is being on that motorcycle and flush the toilet. Within a few blocks, that toilet gets flushed. I can, th that shit is just gone. Maybe I have time for one more. You can go buy this book if you're interested. This motherfucker looks familiar. <laughs> this is Gary Krolovenek. Sounds Russian. He kind of looks like a wild man. I swear I might know Gary. Gary looks really familiar. He's a construction worker, been riding for 20 years. He's got an 89 uh, Road King. I got a Road King also. I ride because it's the only thing left the government can't control. As a biker, you're really a target out there. Give us a fucking break. Don't aim at us. So he's kind of got two things he's saying here. Being on a motorcycle is a sense of freedom. You feel like you're off the grid. That's the best way I can describe it, is that you're off the grid. The, the, the next statement that he makes, as a biker, you're really a target out there. Obviously on a motorcycle, you're a target because you're vulnerable. You're on this fast moving machine with no protection around you and everybody else is in these big cars and they're all on their cell phones and they're not paying attention. And it can feel like that people are targeting you. I've often wondered sometimes, being on my bike, do they just not see me? Or are they assholes? And they actually do see me. And they're trying to kill me. <laughs> I asked, a, I, I asked a police officer that came into my store one time, I used to have a retail store, and we had a lot of cops that used to come in there for some reason. 
And I asked him one time and I was just like, look, I had a motherfucker, this lady, she tried to run me off the road. And, and, it, and like legit run me off the road, like kill me, like, like run me off the road on my motorcycle. Cars do that. And she didn't, it wasn't an accident. She was psycho trying to kill me. I didn't know her. I easily evaded it, you know, being on a bike, you can outrun any car, outmaneuver any car, it was really no big deal, but it freaked me out, it made me angry as fuck. I was trembling mad, I asked the cop, I was just like, you know, we have stand your ground in Florida, and we have the castle law in Florida, we got all these laws that I can protect myself if someone tries to attack me, that was an attack on my life, can I fire back? Can I just start shooting if somebody tries to run me off the road on my motorcycle because they're trying to kill me? <laughs> he said no. Darn. But this is just a little sample of the biker's code and what different people think that the biker's code is. I think it's about brotherhood, it's about looking out for each other. This is what that wave is about when you see bikers wave at each other. And then if you're on a motorcycle and someone waves at you, you, you should wave back because it's just an acknowledgement that we're all out here fighting this same battle. It's all food for thought. Go buy yourself a motorcycle. Thanks for watching.